this is Dr. Graves from the Cal State Northridge Geography Department and geographyplanet.org. This video tutorial is designed to get students started on data analysis. We're going to look at basic descriptive statistics today, mean, mode, median, standard deviation, that sort of thing, uh, using a database that I downloaded from the state of California. Here's the metadata on that. I'll put the link uh, somewhere in the description so you can get to it. What we have is uh, tax return data by zip code from 1992 to 2017 for all zip codes in California. And the salient data here is uh, the number of returns in column F the adjusted gross income per zip code in column G, and the total tax liability in H. Because uh, income data tends to be very skewed, what it is necessary to do to take a bit of that skewness out, especially since we don't have the same number of people per zip code, that we have to create a few new columns, and I've already done that. This is, the first one is income per return, and if I hit the uh, F2 key here or double click in, in the cell, you can see that that is the number of re, uh, the adjusted gross income divided by the returns. So um, in that zip code, the income per return in 2016 was listed at $28,000, and the same goes for the taxable income uh, per return to, uh, that's uh, the value in H2, or column H, divided by the values in column F, and it's $261 owed to the California state, and as a percent, that's not quite 1%, and there's the calculation for that. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that we're going to do, um, because this data set's too large to work with, it's got, what, 61,504 entries. Let's uh, filter it down so it's just Los Angeles County. It's a little easier to work with that way. So I'm going to click on the Sort and Filter option, and I'm going to click on Filter, which um, allows us to do the filtering thing. So in County, select All, or Deselect All. Scroll down, select just Los Angeles, OK, and uh, let's just do one year as well. Let's do the last year of our data, 2017, and let's, let's filter the number of returns so that um, we don't have any uh, neighborhoods or zip codes with just a few returns, like number 10. Uh, those are, will likely create statistical outliers, uh, oddball neighborhoods with only 10 families in them. So number filters, I'm going to select um, greater than or equal to, let's say, um, 1,000 families or 1,000 uh, income returns. And that will filter out uh, any of the really small neighborhoods. OK, so what we're going to do first is to calculate some very basic statistics on this. And there's a couple of ways of doing this. And what I can do here, now that it's filtered, is I'm just going to copy out just the data that I want. I've highlighted it, and that was with Control and Shift and down arrow, which highlights everything I want, control C. I'm going to press the plus button down here to add a new sheet. And then I'm going to paste the data. I'm going to paste the values and nothing else. I'm going to click on A and drag my mouse to the right, and then double click between the letters J and K, which will auto adjust the size of the columns. And so we're pretty ready to go now. Just 2017 data. 
I'm going down to the bottom, row 275 here. I've left row 274 empty, and this is just good practice to always leave a blank uh, row between the start of your calculations and the end of your data block. And so what I want to do is manually calculate several basic statistics. The first thing I want to do is to get a count, the second a mean, the third a median, I would like skewness, I would like standard deviation. And those are the main things that we need to have in our toolbox of descriptive statistics. Oh, and perhaps we ought to put sum in here as well. That's another standard one. So the count is the number of rows of data, the number of entries. It's also considered in, and that formula is count, and we want to type in F2 because that would be the first cell that has data in our column, and then a colon, and then F273. Notice that box appears, and if we were to scroll all the way to the top quickly, we could see how the this blue box encircles the entire column of data only. And then we just press Enter, and that tells us that we have 272 observations. Mean is, oddly enough, not mean. It's average in Excel. And we want the same thing, F2 to F273. Enter. Median is median, luckily. And I'm going to do that a little bit differently. I have opened, uh, typed in open parentheses, and I can use my mouse if I want to, to just highlight the cells that I want the calculation performed on. And there's the median. Notice that it is a smaller than the mean, so that means the skew will be positive. So I'm going to type in skew to F273 is going to be just fine. Standard deviation, that's STDV. And we want standard deev S because we have taken a sample. It is not every zip code in Los Angeles. So standard deeds S, I can click on it, double click to bring that up again, F2 to F273. And then the last thing is equals sum F2 colon F273. And now we have our basic statistics for column F, which has returns. I could go up here to view and uh, choose a split screen or a freeze panes, but my preference is usually split, and so I need to, I'm going to click over here in cell A2 and do split. That way I can scroll to the bottom and still uh, have the top row of data visible to me. So there's 272 returns. The mean, me, uh, median skewness is all there. I've highlighted that block of formulas, calculations, and pressed Control C, which puts the green dotted line around that, which indicates that it's in the clipboard and ready to be pasted. I've highlighted the area that I want to paste those formulas to, and now I just have to press Enter or Control V to make it happen. So if you go to any of these uh, formulas and either hit F2 or uh, with your mouse double click, you will see what the formula is all about. That's the manual way to do that. I'm going to click on the Data tab and select Data Analysis. Now, if this is the first time you are doing data analysis or using the data analysis tools in Excel, this will not appear. Here's what you need to do. You need to go to File, 
you need to find the Options button in the lower left-hand corner. Click on that. Then click on Add-ins from the and then uh, Excel add-in should be visible to the right of the word manage. Click go and this little dialog window will appear and make sure that analysis tool pack is checked. Click OK and then data analysis should appear. There's a possibility that you will have to close the software and reopen it for that data analysis uh, button to appear on the far right of your screen. So once you have that, make sure you click Save um, before you shut down. Um, click on Data Analysis and select from the various analysis tools, Descriptive Statistics, click OK. And what you should do is click in cell F1 and highlight, fast way to do this, control shift right, control shift down. Highlights everything from cell F1 to cell K273. Our data is grouped in columns. We have labels in the first row, so there's no data in this first row, row one. It's the row headers. And we want uh, the summary statistics. That's basically what we want. And we want it in a new worksheet ply. So everything's fine. Click OK. And in blazing fast speed, what you get is all of the data plus some that we just calculated manually. I'm going to click on the A and drag over to the left, and then double click between two of these letters here at the top to expand the columns so they're easy to read. And if we check, just let's check one, our mean 16851, and we come over here to sheet one where we were calculating that manually, there's that 16851 once again. So let's return to sheet three, which has all of this data. And talk for a moment about how to interpret this data. 